I'm Marilyn James, and I'm the appointed spokesperson um, for Sinaiq's Nation. I'm Sinaiq's descendant from both my mother and my father's side. And uh, we're here at Valakin, which is um, an ancient winter village and um, burial ground for the Sinaiq's people. At this spot, we've um, been here for about 12 years, maintaining a presence here and repatriating and reburying remains of um, our ancestors. And uh, what we're offering you is an opportunity to um, view or be involved in a cultural practice by the Sinaiq's people called the oral tradition. In our um, culture, um, many stories were passed down from generation to generation and many of these stories were about creation and those creation stories are called chaptickles. We uh, hear these stories over and over and again, again as we're growing up as children and again as adults and they teach us many things, uh, morals, strength, um, teach us about principles, about um, being part of a community. And it also teaches us respect for um, other species like the frog. Many of these stories wouldn't have been written down. In this case, we've been given permission to write this story down, but we feel that the oral tradition is a very important aspect of our cultural practice. And so hearing the spoken words of the story, whether in the Sinaiq's dialect or in English or viewing um, oral tradition in practice, every bit of it is as important as the spoken word is as important as the printed word. And so you're going to get an opportunity to see, hear this story um, and see this story being told in the Sinaiq's dialect by e Elder Eva Orr, who is the person who told me the story, um, gave me permission to write the story out and to give the story to um, the public. My name is uh, Bob Campbell, and uh, my Indian name is Kikachask which means a great boulder rolling in the sky, close as I can come, but my grandfather's told me. A chop tickle is a legend of the past, and it also has every emotion you have. Every human emotion you'll see in the chop tickles, and they can highlight either one of them. You think you're telling a story about a child, and you'll see a grown-up sitting there putting his head down because he saw himself, in that, and he knows he's wrong. After John died, I began to think about I'm going to tell about the legend of the Frog Mountain in Indian, the way I heard it when I was a child up to the time I was a teenager. And this is the way they told it to me, the elders of that time. Kasapi, kasapi, kasapi. Mutlakai temhulau. Trish, tihuklam. Hel, hel. Dakam spink, dakam spink. Lutz kaits. Lutzuch ginems, uhriati stim a haltem hula, ulap uch sap, kaula, eati isla cinemi stim uli yat tuchtuchlil, ya yatl quilhat la, huil ka kinmat kam ya isil. Thank 
Хау. Ахалтам хула. Ахалтам спинки лис хилмс. Хиушляят из хилхатла. Ликвилхил какин. Татла амалхит. Himmel <laughs> Kids <laughs> 
imkhlikli kiwtsui iswarakhen kiwt ishtil iswarakhen mikhitswarakhen ul khaypchum kiwt chunt mikhitswarakhen maya apna lut khutaks ishun khui khutatla ameti ni me weekend pick ishun ki ishun he was tippy, he himmel eight. Himmel kitskis eight. Himmel just will get him hula. And we asked Nahmel's eight. Milk has to will get him hula. He was kept him. He was wheel who had land, dislocate, tuned milk, it's warrack and excitement. He will have to look up nice, so yapping mushrooms. He will say, I had it. He had it. He is still. He wish this will heal his eight kit. Leave eight He will scratch him up at him hula. He was too tiny. He steamed splally. He steamed to Mkula. He was a little bit of 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 a little he took me at Stiapi. He clicked with Ult Stiap, white, white, kitsky, seal. He was a little arm old kid, he was soon a skitten to me, so I reckon Ult Suntum. Why? In we at Lapna, me wickened, he clut, Miss Gull, Miss. Sixteen, so he I weakened high hips and I took a high a high hip scale while co weakened can can motile. I put artsman at eighteen, so keep that full fault. He must soon be snam imatum yayati. He he like in his skin, he leak and moot. Nay, I thought it's neat and full up. He 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 us us loot a wixel clask eat he us cool cool. He us a mooty swar up can and he us up now. Mat lut at me stin stimat sum sulki so yapi nakam sum nimplat kuar kain kuar kain he is kwisti he he mutili he swarak he klut he that's it why he he chutman like any sakin he 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 chopped chest, chopped tickle, and I'm still like, why he leads chest. The Frog Mountain story is the land survival story of the Sinai's people. And um, it's a story about a time when many, many years, years, years ago, many generations ago, Native people who lived on this land experienced an extreme drought. Um, and it didn't rain for years, and they didn't receive good, um, enough moisture in the land to um, for the plants to grow, for the wildlife to be abundant. 
And after many years of experiencing this drought, many people died. Many people um, started moving away from this land because they thought that uh, it would never come back. And um, a lot of people moved away because it was sad for them to be here in a place where many of their friends and their family died and, um, and there wasn't much here. And so in this village, not this particular village, but in a Sinaiq's village, maybe it was this village, that um, <clears throat> the villagers decided that they needed to uh, move away in case that, uh, it, it, to enable the group to survive. And so they had decided to pack up all the valuables from the village and send and, and go away from this place. And so there was an elder who um, was in charge of the village and they um, <clears throat> made sh and he made sure that everybody had packed everything to get ready to go and he had decided that he wasn't going to go, that he wasn't going to leave this place, that he was going to stay and if necessary he was going to die where um, his ancestors were buried in his homeland. So what happened was uh, he got everybody packed up and ready to go and they um, and then he told him, I'm not going with you. And so all the people in the village began to cry and carry on, and they didn't want to leave their elder, who was their leader, behind. And um, so none of them wanted to leave. And the elder said, no, some of you have to leave, because if we don't survive, someone from our group has to survive. So they took all the valuables and they made a decision who is going to leave? Um, and that was based on what kind of skills they had, survival skills, I guess, and, and uh, knowledge, and, and um, someone as a guide, someone who had other skills like medicine knowledge, stuff like that. So a group of people was determined, and, and uh, they got ready and left. And everybody was feeling really bad because their friends and their family had left. And so um, the elder decided that he was going to go off and pray. And he didn't think that the people would be able to survive with the drought the way it was. So he was going off to pray and to fast and ask for guidance for his people. So he went away, told his group that he was going to go away and pray. And did, went off and fasted for many days, didn't eat anything, didn't drink anything. And after a while, a frog came to him, and the frog spoke to him and told the old man, You go and have your people dig cliffs into the banks of the river, and if you do this, your people will be okay. And so the frog left, and the elder decided that he would go back and tell the people what he saw, and he sat all the people down and said, I had a visitor, and the visitor was a frog, and he told me that if we built caves into the side of the banks of the river, that would be okay, that would make it. So the people agreed, and they started digging the caves in the banks of the river, and the elder was thinking, oh, it's, it's so sad, we're not going to be able to make it, but at least if the caves um, would, pr would be a proper burial, place for the people if they died. So when winter came, all the people moved down into the caves. And as their food ran out, because they weren't able to carry, uh, gather much to stay alive, as uh, their food supplies began to ran, run out, the frogs came. The frogs came up from the ground, um, from the riverbed, into the caves, and offered themselves to the people. And the people ate the frogs until one day this frog came into the cave and said, Don't eat me. Everything, there's food on the land for you now. And everything's going to be okay. You have to go out and uh, make it. He said, you'll, you'll, you'll make it now. And so he said, I'm going to show you that some, 
species, some being that doesn't seem to threaten life, doesn't seem to impact life any, in any way, some being that seems very weak in comparison to many mighty species, has shown you through our love and our offering. And we're going to give you uh, a symbol to remember us by and to learn to respect us and insignificant things because that's important. And with that, the frog hopped and grew and hopped and grew and he became a mountain, Frog Mountain. And so Frog Mountain is a symbol to the Sinaiq's people of the kindness and generosity of the frog species who gave their lives in offering to the Sinaiq's people so they could survive through a severe drought time. The end. <laughs>